opening hymn is The Advent of Our King, hymn number 53, 57. Please join and sing. Good morning. Good morning, Father. God is good all the time. God is good. When we say those words, sometimes it can be challenging, but the readings today remind us in a special way to continue to rejoice because God is good all the time. In the midst of everything going on in our lives, let us Take a moment today to come up with the special prayers that we'd like to offer to God, especially prayer of thanksgiving, something that brings us rejoicing in the midst of the chaos and everything going on. We bow our heads and come up with our prayer intentions for the day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. My brothers and sisters in Christ, to continue the celebration of this sacred mystery, let us call to mind our sins and ask God for his love and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the Savior of the world. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and the Son of Mary. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray. O oh God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the lost nativity, enable us, we pray, to attend the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim the liberties to captives and release to the prisoners, 
to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God. I rejoice heartily in the Lord, and my God is the joy of my soul. For he has clothed me with a robe of salvation and wrapped me in a mantle of justice, like a bridegroom adorned with a diadem, like a bride bedecked with her jewels, as the earth brings forth its plants and a garden makes its growth spring up so will the Lord God make justice and praise spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm is, My soul rejoices in my God. My soul rejoices in Claims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked up upon his lowly servant from this day. All generations will call me blessed. My soul rejoices in my God. The Almighty has done great things for me and his holy name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. My soul rejoices in my soul. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy. My soul rejoices in my God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice always, pray without ceasing. In all circumstances, give thanks, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophetic utterances. Test everything, retain what is good. Refrain from every kind of evil. May the God of peace make you perfectly holy, and may you entirely, spirit, soul, and body, be preserved blameless for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will also accomplish it. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He was not the light but came to testify to the light. And this is the testimony of John 
when the Jews from Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to him to ask him, who are you? He admitted and did not deny it, but admitted, I am not the Christ. So they asked him, what are you then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. So they said to him, who are you? So we can give an answer to those who sent us. What do you have to say for yourself? He said, I am the voice of the one crying out in the desert. Make straight the way of the Lord. As Isaiah the prophet said, some Pharisees were also sent. They asked him, why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ or Elijah or the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. But there is one among you whom you do not recognize, the one who is coming after me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to untie. This happened in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. So I'll call upon Captain Callan, Chris, to please come up and light our third candle. I won't tell you which, which one it is, but if you look at me, you can figure it out. Thank you. Before you go too far, don't go too far. Yeah, it's my tradition. Blame me. You, you, you will now have to just tell the community something about you, just something about you, your family, whatever you want to say. Go ahead, Chris. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. One thing you don't know about me is that I do not like rose color. I do not. Been a priest for more than 20 years. I've been in several parishes, even in the civilian parishes. Do you know the first thing I do? I'm not talking about the second day. The first day I arrive at any parish, I usually go into the chapel, say a quick prayer, asking God to help me in my imperfections and help me in my ministry. And I pray for the people of God that I'm going to minister to in that parish, however long. After I do that, do you know the second thing I usually do? I go into the sacristy. I open up the closet there. And my prayer is that, please God, I pray that they don't have a rose chasuble. <laughs> it worked in some parishes. In some, it didn't work. Some parishes, I will look, they don't have it. I will go, yes, I'm not even going to say a word. I'm not even going to buy it while I'm here. Even when I went to Aviano, I looked, they didn't have it. I'm like, yes. Before I knew it, the ladies got together. I don't know how they found out. They got together and said, we have to buy it 
before the third Sunday of Advent. Because the rose color looks like, looks like pink or something. I just don't like wearing it. I go here, I'm like, oh God, they have it. They do. I don't know who bought it here in Turkey. Now I'm obliged to wear it. Did you know that it's only twice if you Google, Google Mass at the Vatican this weekend? Probably the Pope is having Mass maybe about the same time that we are here. The Pope will be wearing this color also. Do you know that only two times in the entire liturgical year that we can wear this? And that is on this day, the third Sunday of Advent and the fourth Sunday of Lent. That's why, you know, I rather don't have it, but we have it here. So why, why a different color? I mean, we have three purples and one rose color, they call it. It looks like pink to me. That's why I don't like it. It's a special Sunday in Advent. That Sunday is called Gaudate. Gaudate. G-A-U-D-E-T-E. Gaudate. Gaudate is from the Latin. That means rejoice. It's called Gaudate Sunday. We've been talking about preparation for Christmas, right? The first weekend, we lit the first candle of Advent. If you remember, we talked about it. That one signified hope. It signifies hope. This last weekend, we lit the second one that signifies faith. Today, we lit the third one that signifies joy, to rejoice. To rejoice? Why do we have to rejoice? Because Christmas is near. The first weekend, we talked about, you know, getting ready to await the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we await that in two capacities. One, for Christmas, the birthday of our Lord Jesus Christ. Second is what we call the parousia, the second coming of Christ, because we don't know the hour, we don't know when. We have to keep getting ready. We talked about all that, right? But today, the church invites you and I and says, you know what? Just chill. Italians will call it tranquilo. Just tranquilo. Be peaceful. Take a deep breath. Find a reason to rejoice on this day. It doesn't matter what is going on. I will find a reason to rejoice today. And I have so many reasons in my own life. This is particularly, this third Sunday is very timely. It came handy. Look at the news we have around the world today. The news of the vaccination, the possibility of people gradually getting vaccinated, the hope of the world, the United States in particular, gradually hoping to get vaccinated. And, please God, gradually the pandemic will begin to die. Why do we have to remind somebody to rejoice? How about people who are going through rough times in their lives right now, through some serious financial difficulties? Very difficult to watch television these days. You agree with me? Very difficult. From the political shenanigans to the pandemic, you don't even know which one to think about. And the church, in the midst of all this, says, you know what? Rejoice. I want you to be happy. A lot of people naturally will push back. They don't have reasons to be happy. 
They've lost loved ones, family members. People are in financial troubles. A lot of people don't even know if they have a job tomorrow. We are worried about grandmas and grand grandpas and our parents and relatives. We have family members in the healthcare field and all that. We worry every day. Church says today, I got it. Jesus tells all of us today, I hear you, but rejoice anyway. I want you to understand the connectedness. I'm biased, right? I'm biased. I'm a Catholic. You are. You are wonderful Catholics too. But I'm also biased because I'm a priest. I love the, the arrangement of the Catholic liturgy. Rejoice will not make sense unless we look back to the first two Sundays. We can only rejoice if we reflect on the last two weeks. The first one says, hope. It is only hope that will help us to rejoice. Last weekend says, faith. So we need faith, we need hope, in order to rejoice in a meaningful way. We may, uh, rejoicing doesn't mean that everything is perfect. Far from it. Rejoicing means that in the midst of everything going on, that we still trust in God, that he still loves us beyond our imaginations. And that's why we say God is good all the time. Let's look at the readings today. And I promise I won't preach too long today. That's my promise. You know why I make you that promise? Because we have a program this evening. And that program is the holiday Christmas tree lighting in front of the club today. So if you give me a nod that you will be there or you might be there, then I'll cut my homily into half just to show my gratitude. Are you going to be there? Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. I see some hairs nodding. Thank you for your commitment. And because of that, from the bottom of my heart, I will not preach long today. That's my gift to you. I'll keep my homily to only 50 minutes. <laughs> Don't mean to scare you. Let's look at the first reading today. The first reading is very personal to me. You know why? That is exactly the reading I chose when I said my first mass. I was ordained. The next day, I celebrated my very first mass. That was the first reading, Isaiah chapter 61. It reminds us that the Spirit of the Lord has anointed me to bring glad tidings to bring good news to the people. Did you hear the word glad? That means good news of rejoicing, good news of Christ, which brings joy in our lives. And what was our response to psalm today? What was that? What was that? Let's hear that one more time. That response that we heard today. Oxy? My soul rejoices in my God. Crystal, you read it? Oxy played it? My soul rejoices in my God, my Savior. Do you know who said that? The Blessed Virgin Mary. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, beginning from 42, she was told she was going to be the mother of, of our Lord Jesus Christ. She was going to have a child. She was confused. She didn't know how this was going to happen. The angel left that. She was supposed to be confused and depressed and worrying about what was this news about? The angel said, don't worry. The Holy Spirit will overshadow you. After the angel left, 
she composed the prayer that we heard today in the responsorial psalm. My soul rejoices in God my Savior. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. For he has looked upon his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. Isn't that what we do as Catholics? Blessed are you among women. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. That's in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1. Let's go further. St. Paul, who was in prison so many times, who suffered a lot, He's been persecuted, right? He's been misunderstood because of his previous life, and then he got converted. And my prayer is that someday, before we leave here, we'll get a chance to drive for half an hour and go to Tarsus, to the home of St. Paul, which is near this location. St. Paul wrote to the Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. He said, Brothers and sisters, rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In all circumstances, give thanks. Really? You're going to tell people around the world, people who are suffering right now, in all circumstances, give thanks? Yep, because God is good all the time. Rejoice always, St. Paul tells us today. The church carefully chose these readings to remind us that it doesn't matter what is going on. It doesn't matter the stress and the worries and the relationship issues and the work stress issues and the distractions that will come with our jobs and everything going on. Find the reason to give thanks. Rejoice. Christmas is near. Rejoice because... God is always in control. We know the meaning of the Mass. The Mass, Eucharistia, means thanksgiving. During consecration today, as I lift up the body and blood of Christ, think about those reasons, big or small, that you have to give thanks and live those prayers of thanksgiving. Those prayers of rejoicing, leave them up to God. He will continue to accept them and continue to bless you and your families with more reasons to be happy. Even in today's gospel, John made it clear, I am not the Christ, but there's a good news for all of you. There is one greater than I, whom you don't even recognize. I'm not even worthy to untie the strap of his sandals. He is the one talking about Christ, giving them a reason to rejoice and be hopeful and have faith. May God bless you, bless your families, bless your friends, bless your co-workers, and yes, bless your enemies, bless your distractors with more reasons to be joyful and be glad. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us stand and profess the faith as could be found on the inside cover page of the Mr. Lev. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, life from life. Through God, from through God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. And rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. 
he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Let us with faith of our prayers to God, who knows best how to take care of us. We pray that the joy of this third Sunday of Advent will renew our lives as we prepare for Christmas. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray the world will soon experience the joy and hope brought forth by the COVID vaccinations and gradually see an end to this global health pandemic. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for peace and good health of our family members and friends. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the safety of all our deployed military members and God's protection on their loved ones, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. In the silence of our hearts, let us now offer to God our private intentions for this Mass. Let us give him thanks for the reasons that he has given us to rejoice on this day, especially for the gift of good health, the gift of life, for the opportunity to see the light of a new day. Good and gracious God, hear our praise. Continue to bless us whenever we call upon you with your favors, despite our weaknesses. Father, we ask you to listen kindly to the prayers we have spoken aloud and those intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. We ask you to continue to, to bless our lives with joy, peace, and tranquility. We offer you these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the offertory. Our next hymn is Come Thou Long Expected Jesus, hymn number 40. Please join and sing. Pray, my brothers and sisters in Christ, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept us with your hand, the praise and God of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplished for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. 
Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right and just. He raised really right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. Through Christ our Lord, for all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the virgin mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming, and proclaim his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave him thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've heard us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Timothy, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may marry to be co heirs with eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, the God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. stand and pray in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you say to your apostle, as you say to all of us here today, peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And your spirit. We turn to one another and offer the sign of God's peace. Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world, Jesus, who calls us to rejoice in him always. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worried that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
heart of Jerusalem. The time of your morning is ended now. The Lord of life will come. A voice cries out in the cries out in the wilderness, prepare a way for the Lord. Our voice cries out in the wilderness, a man by way of God. Why shall cry, and why shall I cry, all flesh is like grass. Christ out in the wilderness, prepare a way for the Lord. Our voice cries out in the wilderness, make straight a highway for God. To all my people, the ones dear to me, speak to the heart of Jerusalem. The time of your morning is ended now. The Lord of life will come. Our voice cries out in the wilderness. Prepare a way for the Lord. Our voice cries out in the wilderness. Make straight a highway. Christ out in the wilderness, prepare a way for the Lord. Our voice cries out in the wilderness, make straight a highway for For the reasons in our lives that we have to be joyful, for the reasons to rejoice together, we give thanks to the Holy Trinity as we pray. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us pray. We implore your mercy, O Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a second. God is good? All the time. All the time? God is good. Do we have any new members? People who are new, please stand and remain standing. Thank you. So it's our tradition to say your name and where you came from, whatever you want to say, where you walk, or anything you want to say. It's a free country. Please go ahead, ma'am.
Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Please. Wonderful, thank you. <laughs> See? Thank you. Awesome, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Did you say Bill or Hill? Bill, so from Little Rock, Arkansas, from California, and from Wyoming. Awesome. I'm a priest of the Diocese of Tulsa, Oklahoma. That's not too far from Arkansas. So I can say, uh, you know, I say y'all, you know, Oklahoma, right? <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you for finding the chapel. And don't forget to give your email to our, one of our parish coordinators, Captain Dana Sanelli, before you leave. That way you can be in our email um, parish distro, okay? Thank you so much. How about, I know someone is leaving very soon. Who, who else is leaving besides El uh, Captain? Come on. <laughs> got so used to calling him LT, you know? Okay, who else is leaving? Okay, come up, come up, come up. Can you grab one of the shirts? Okay, so after one year here, of a busy, busy tour, very busy, very busy for you, was our sock, and worked so hard taking care of our people, the good, the good and the bad, you know, you saw it all, um, we worked in coordination with chaplains, just take care of people. And you're about to leave. The first thing that we'll do is to give you a little blessing. Blessing from the priest and the people of God. So you stand over here and stretch your right hands, please. God our Father, bless your son, your servant, Manny, as he goes back to be with family. Bless his future endeavors. Bless his new assignment at Randolph in Texas. Continue to bless his family, especially as they transition amidst the health crisis. Continue to keep them safe. Continue to keep them healthy. Continue to answer their prayers whenever they call upon you. Bless them with peace and tranquility. May they continue to rejoice always and find reasons to be happy and joyful. May the blessing of Almighty God be with you, Manny, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Wonderful. So, it's a little, little thing. If it doesn't fit your big arms, yeah, I'm sure somebody in your family, your wife or one of your boys, can. That's a little memento from our, from our parish, okay? Thank you for being a part of us. And on behalf of the wing chaplain, a little chapel coin, okay? Awesome. Um, can you grab the microphone for me, that microphone? So um, you're going to say a few words. It's our tradition. The, the video will not catch it without the microphone, yes. So. Thank you. Oh, thank you, sir. Well, thank you, Chaplain Larry. I appreciate it. Um, kind words and, of course, for the blessings from the, from the crowd. Um, yeah, a whole year, right? A, a year and change. Uh, at, I try to stick around a little longer waiting for the next arc, but uh, that's not going to happen. So he'll be here later on. So I, I just, all right, let me pull chalks and head back home, right? Uh, but yes, this, uh, I, I grew up Catholic in Peru. And uh, coming here, it was my first time in like 19 years uh, since I went to church in the Catholic service. Uh, it, it, brought me, it brought me back to my childhood and that relationship that I wanted to have with God, right? Uh, the struggles that we all have. Um, Chapel on the Leary, we had an additional connection with sports, right? We play soccer and we, it made it very easy for me to come back uh, to, to church and of course being with you all. Um, it makes the time goes faster, right? 
Uh, I thank you for all of y'all that, you know, we spoke uh, on a one-on-one and, on, of course, for what you do, supporting your troops, because I tell you, doing the side duty, right, we only get to see the negative, but uh, I feel like we're changing the culture, and uh, you take a big part on that and um, continue to do that. Um, now back to my three kids. Uh, Thor, right, that was a good story. Uh, yes, yeah, so in, in, three, in three days, I'll, I'll get to see mine, and I'm all like, running scenarios in my head. How am I gonna hug him? How am I, what am I gonna say, right? The little surprise or whatever. I'm uh, but anyways, thank you so much uh, all and uh, enjoy your rest of the time in Turkey. And uh, hopefully we cross paths uh, at some point of our careers. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you again. Thank you. thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, Jesse, what we have, what we have, on our way out, what do we have to grab on our way out in the annex? Okay, so on your way out, yeah, I'm sure money will also, Captain Money, who promoted not too long ago, <laughs> will also stop by, say hello, grab banana and strawberry or whatever on your way out. Thank you for your faith. Thank you for being here. You all got my email about the Christmas schedule, right? You got my email, please. Um, you know how people, every chapel, every Catholic church, people will start calling three, two, three days before Christmas. Um, what time is midnight mass? Okay, what time is midnight mass? Did you listen to that question? What time is midnight mass? <laughs> so look at the schedule and see what time Christmas mass will be this year. Thank you for your faith, and I will remind you again by email and by announcement in the coming week. God is good. All the time. All the time? God is good. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is Stay Awake, hymn number 69. Please join and sing. Stay awake, be ready.